Hi, in this video we're using Substance 3D Designer to create a leaf with spline nodes. Let's go over the key nodes and parameters we'll use first. For the spline bridge list node we need to place splines before. Then it generates new splines between the input splines. Bridge spline amount defines the number of generated splines. Bridge splines types lets you choose between straight linear or smooth quadratic Bezier splines. For the spline bridge mapper grayscale node, we need to place splines before. It then maps a grayscale image across a list of input splines. UV scale X and Y adjusts the scale of the image coordinates. The spline select node is used to select splines in the input list based on specific criteria and outputs only the selected splines. With selection mode, you can select the first or last spline of the list but also a specific spline or range of splines in the list using the index. Range start and range end define the lowest and highest indexes in the range of selected splines. The append node appends a list of input splines onto an existing list. The order of the list is preserved, so be mindful of the order in which you append splines, as this order is taken into account in other nodes such as scatter on splines, etc. The spline render node draws strings of segments along the input splines. Let's build this leaf setup together. You can reuse it later as starting point for more complex ones. We start with a spline polyquadratic node to build the outer side of the leaf. Let's move the points in position. By increasing the thickness value, we see the helpers better in the preview. Then we connect it to another spline polyquadratic node. Flip the direction and activate connect start to input spline and connect end to input spline. Now the splines flow in the same direction, which is important for the bridge step we do later on. The direction helpers are a great help for this. Further duplicate it and reposition P2 and P3 to the other side. To select just the outer leaf shape splines without the stem, we add a spline select node. Let's switch the selection mode to index and set the spline index value to 2 to select the right side. Now we connect it to a spline append node. Then simply connect the first spline with the left leaf side to the lower inputs of the spline append node. Appending is important for the spline fill node, which we will use now. We forward it into a bevel node and further join it to a threshold node to control and extend the shape. Let's tweak the threshold value to 0.95. For the veins, we connect the last spline polyquadratic node to a spline bridge list. We decrease the bridge spline amount to 10 for less lines. Switch the bridge splines type to quadratic bezier to get smoother lines and increase the start offset x value to 0.01. Now we forward it to a spline bridge mapper grayscale node. As color map, we add an anisotropic noise node and rotate it 90 degrees. We deactivate reduce UV stretching and reduce the UV scale X and Y to 0.35 for less dense lines. This color output can later be blurred and blended with the leaf for structure. Further, we connect the veins outputs to another spline append node and join the outputs of the last spline polyquadratic node too. We add a spline render node to get final rendered splines from the veins and leaf shape. For the stem, we add a spline cubic node and reposition the points. Then we connect it to a spline render node and switch the spline style to gradient. Let's blur it slightly with a Blur HQ grayscale node and an intensity of 3.5. To tweak the height, we join it to a Levels node. Increase the level in Low to 0.03. Reduce the level in Mid to 0.35 to push mid values more towards Black. And reduce the level out high to 0.9 to darken it slightly. Now we use these separate parts of the leaf to blend it together and further customize it till we have a beautiful leaf. Here's our final base result of the setup we did before. You can save this setup and use it in your own project. Let's explore a bit more how we blend it together. You can experiment with a combination of non-uniform blur, levels, cells, 
and multidirectional warp nodes to introduce some details to the outer area of the filled leaf shape. Levels nodes are generally really helpful to tweak individual color ranges separate. The veins and outlines can be blurred or beveled and then blended with the leaf shape. Further blend the blurred bridge mapper color channel to the setup for more structure and finally add the stem to the leaf. Here you really have the freedom to experiment. With this setup you can now go back to the start of the setup and tweak the points to get the different leaf shape. I have full control over the stem independently from the leaf. If you want to learn more, you can download and open the graphs shown in the video. Thanks for watching and we would love to hear your thoughts, ideas and suggestions for future quick tips. So let us know them in the comments. See you in the next quick tip episode.